Hello everybody, this is Missy. I'm going to be starting a tutorial series for Krita. Today we're just going to be going over the interface, where the options are, where to locate, your brushes, and all that other fun stuff. So, when you open Krita, this is how it's going to look. To make sure all this is not grid out, we're going to make a new document. It automatically brings you up to the file the new file document settings, your width, your height, the resolution. You can actually pick from predefined settings here or make your own. So if I want, mine is called standard. But if I want to name it something else, I can. I can choose how many layers I want to start with, the background color if I want it as the actual first layer, which might be useful for doing gradients, uh, for just simple character work, or just the canvas color which means you will get actual four blank layers versus three blank layers and one gray background layer. The create from clipboard option, if you take anything from your clipboard, your print screen, your control C for copy, you can make a new create a document and it'll make a new document based on those sizes. Now make templates. You get four options. You can pick whichever you, one you would like. You can edit them after you open. They're not like set in stone. Design templates. Design templates here. It tells you the size A3, A4, and the resolution 300 dpi. DSLR templates for photography work and texture templates for um, seamless textures for your 3D models or backgrounds for websites. I'm just going to be creating my own custom document. I'll just use the standard and create. And as you can see here in our layers panel or Docker, we have four blank layers or empty layers. Go ahead and name them to whatever you need them to be. If you're doing a lot of illustration work. You might want to name them as line work, color, background, or sketch. All right. So I'll just turn that off. Over here on the left side of your screen or your window, you have all of your tools to use. The top ones here: your selector, text, pen, pattern editor, and your gradient gradient editor. We'll go over those in a different tutorial to explain what they do and how they work. Your line tools and your brush tools. This is your actual brush tool, so any brush you use with the actual brush icon. The ruler is actually for your straight line. So if you're used to hitting the shift key in Photoshop or whatever program and making a straight line automatically, um, you don't have that in Krita. You have to use the ruler tool. It's actually, it takes a while to get used to, but once you do, it's actually kind of nice because then you're not like, oh no, I didn't hit the shift key at the right time. I just have this squiggly line now. So, it's pretty cool. You got your shape and your polygon tools, your curve tools, and here underneath, you have your move tools, your crop, and your transform tools. This is going to be like uh, making right triangles at 90 degrees. It's like a little bit of a measurement tool. We'll cover that later. Paint bucket, gradient, eyedropper, color picker, grid options. I don't have it on, so it's not going to show up. And your selection tools. And then up here are your menu options. You have file. You can actually save incremental versions. So if you wanted to save like 10 different versions of a file to see which color options or whatever it is you want to compare them against each other and see which you like best, you can do that. Or just save incremental versions as you're working. For example, all right. So I have this for testing. Right now, if you look in the 
uh, top here where the name is of the file, it just says testing.kra. If you go to save incremental version, it will change it to testing underscore zero zero one a. Uh, that's because I already have <laughs> that zero zero one saved, so it's adding on an extra frame padding for that, which is actually pretty good because then you can say, oh, this is testing zero zero one a, testing zero zero one b. They can say a is going to be the purple, and then b will be the blue blue line so I can go back and forth between which file I prefer. And as you can see when you open another file you get little tabs here in your workspace to switch between them. And close that. Your edit, copy paste, you can change the color, pattern, your view, uh, full screen mode, show canvas only, wraparound mode is actually really useful. I'll show you that real quick. This is great for making seamless textures. So if you want to connect it, it'll connect and it'll be, oh, this is seamless. There's no weird um lines on the edge where those where that pattern's gonna meet. So like when you're on a website and you see this this weird white line going through each little pattern box, that's why they didn't make it seamless. Um mirror view is just reversing it. And rulers, you can show those if you'd like. Take them off. Status bar is actually on the bottom here, the very bottom. If you take it off, you don't get your zoom in feature. And panning assistance, you can turn that off. And let's see, let's get your image. You get your image properties. Can't you see MYK? You can change the color space. Rear the file horizontally or vertically. Scale it to a new image size. Resize the whole canvas. Image split. All these tools I'll be going over in a different video. Your layer, you have just the layer horizontally, not just the whole canvas. You can do it vertically, you can rotate it offset it, flatten it. So basically flattening is taking two layers and merging them together. You can make a new layer, import something as a new layer. And your select features, your select tools here. So you can grow that selection, you can shrink it, change the border, you can smooth it, feather it, whatever you need to do. Your filters Blur, artistic, contrast, color adjustments, all that fun stuff are here. Your tools. Uh, these are basically just for recording actions and stuff. I think Photoshop has something similar. It's pretty neat. Your settings here. You can change the dockers. You can uh, select which ones you need to see. I just have the default right now. Themes. If you want to change it to a different color scheme. To change configure Krita, um, your resources, which are your custom brushes and all that fun stuff. Window, if you have more than one tab open, you can switch between them. And your help. And that's pretty much it for the menu options. And like I said, I can go over a lot of that stuff in another tutorial. Bring up my brush again. On the right hand side, we have our color selector. Can move it down. So you can pick whatever color you need. Down here, you have sliders to pick, kind of fine tune your color pick, your color choice. You have your layers here. And in the layer docker, you can create a new layer, um, a fill layer, filter, vector, clone, group, or paint. Paint is the default. Transparency mask, filter mask, local selection. Uh, you can um, duplicate your layer. You can move it up and down. You can also put it into a group. There we go. And you can take it out of the group.
and the layer properties again and you can trash it. And underneath the layers docker you have your brush presets. These are all the brushes Krita provides. The plain white boxes that you see here and here, those are my custom brushes. I never made a symbol for them, so they're just white boxes right now with some have scribbles on them. And right next to the brush preset tab is the tool options. Uh, tool options will be used for everything you select. Your type tool, your ruler, your brush, your line, color selector, uh, paint bucket, all those options will be here. Which is kind of nice because when you're scaling or transforming and stuff, you want to be able to make adjustments to the settings. That's pretty much it for the interface. Um, I don't think there's anything else specifically I'd like to go over at this time. If you have questions about the interface right now, let me know. I haven't gone over keyboard shortcuts, and I probably won't until we start getting more in depth with everything. Um, let's see. Yeah. So if you have anything specific you have been playing with lately and you want to know more about, or want a little video about it, you know, let me know. If you think I went too fast, or have any other comments or criticisms of the video, please let me know. This is my first tutorial video, so I'm a little new to making them. So yeah. Alright, thank you for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video.